pursuant to the provisions of section 2.68.030 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws, notice is hereby given that if you're not satisfied with the decision mm -hmm. made by the Metropolitan Transportation Licensing Commission, you may appeal the decision by petitioning for a writ of certiorari with the Davidson County Chancery or Circuit Court. Your appeal must be filed within 60 days of the date of the entry of the Metropolitan Transportation Licensing Commission's decision. We advise that you seek your own independent legal advice to ensure that your appeal is filed in a timely manner and that all procedural requirements have been met. <laughs> have the commissioners had an opportunity to review last month's minutes? We have. Yeah. Is there a, a motion regarding approval? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. First item on our agenda is a public hearing um, regarding um, uh, booting company applications, Mr. Fields? We actually reversed the process that we should have had on this. Last month we actually had the meeting. We realized that we missed the public meeting. I think all we have to do, you've already approved, we've been through the process of asking the questions and such. I think all we need to do though is open a public hearing and make sure there is no one that has a comment and, and then confirm uh, your decision from last month, assuming that you want to do that. Has anyone submitted a form to speak? Would anyone like to um, address uh, Golden Rule Booting Company's application? At this point, we'll close the public hearing. Uh, Mr. Fields, do we need to do anything else with yeah, regard to the I think if you just, I think an, uh, an affirmative vote would then confirm the, we, we will have followed all of our procedures. That reaffirm approval? Mm -hmm. I think that's probably I move we reaffirm approval. Second. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Uh, next item on our agenda is under taxi cabs. We have a Nash Vegas board member report uh, to review. Mr. Fields? Oh, each year, anytime, or anytime there's a change of board members of any of the companies, uh, you're required to report it to the commission and for y'all to uh, uh, review it and then uh, accept it. Or deny it, your options either way. <laughs> <laughs> I move to accept. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. We also have a, um, we've been notified by Green Cab of a manager change. Because the driver was listed, uh, this particular situation, the manager was listed on the uh, application, then we'd need to, the same thing, to accept or deny. I move to accept. Second. Set. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. We also have two driver applications. Uh, the first is from uh, Sayum uh, Kubawe, uh, Mr. Fields. Mr. Kubawe? We had a, a little strange situation on this. In his application this year, we determined that he had had a charge last year. He, he when we did the fingerprints this year, we found the charge. He failed to list it on last year's application. We've not had any problem with him, but because it was left off of the last application, we felt that we probably needed to bring it to you. What he had failed to disclose was a, a shoplifting charge last year. That, that was, was dismissed. dismissed. It's dismissed, right? Okay. But it still should have been listed. It should have been listed. Uh, do you have a statement you'd like to make? Uh, Commissioner's name is Jonathan Brooks here for Nash Vegas Cab Operations Manager. Here to answer any questions you have. I've also got my driver here for any questions that you have. Any disciplinary issues? No, sir. What kind of driver? I'm sorry? What kind of driver? Employee? Uh, he's a very good employee. Again, just to know, we don't have any complaints at, at present for the driver. Uh, he is uh, punctual with his payments to the company. He's an asset to the company in, in whole. Any idea why the case was dismissed? Um, I would uh, leave that to speak to the driver to answer those kind of questions. Uh, I'm not totally sure to my knowledge about that question. I'd like to ask you. Yes, sir. Okay. What were you alleged to have stolen and why was your case dismissed? Because that time uh, the judge watched the video. First of all, the things happened 
uh, February uh, 12, 2016. That was uh, then the next day. My wife she ha she gonna have a baby, and uh, she have appointment in the morning like 5 a.m. And before that day on the 12, we have to shopping for uh, preparing for the baby. And I go. I live in Mount Juliet, Tennessee. I go to the Walmart. When I got there, my wife she called me, please, honey, and that, don't forget bring, uh, pick the memory card for the video. Okay, I said, and I was so busy. My I have another two kids, childrens. I just take them hair hair salon to fix them hair. I live there and I come, go to Walmart to buy a lot of things for which is prepared for the tomorrow. And I picked that the memory card was 12 bucks. And I pick it, it was a small. When I put the, the, the card, it's fair. I grab and I put it in my pocket. And round, round, and I buy I, a lot of stuff. And when I come back and to pay, and I did everything, almost 300, more than a dollar, I paid. Finally, when I work out, the guy, he follow me. Sir, we, know, we, we need you to talk to you. OK, follow me. I go with him. And he asked me, what is the, the memory card, he said. Totally, I lost my mind. I forgot. I said, what are you talking about? I don't have any memory. OK, I understand what was taken. Now, why was your case dismissed at court? Oh, the, 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 the judge said, I see the video, which is the, I, do, I think they have a video. Right. He said, I don't see anything. This is, so can you pay this court fee? Say, yes. OK. Go. So I just pay. And Thank you. Yeah. I would also note from the TBI report that the there doesn't appear to be any other incidences of theft, and the only other thing showing are traffic violations. So. You want to make a motion? If we're ready. Make a motion to approve. I second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Oh, a little bit, thank you. We also have a driver application for Hashim Washamo. In, uh, in making his application this year, he failed to disclose two charges. One was dis, uh, dis, uh, order of conduct. It was a failure to refuse to comply with an order. Both charges were expunged. Uh, unfortunately, they did remain on his uh, on the TBI report that we had. So we asked him to appear. Everything else was in order, except he the expungement. Uh, he didn't list the expungement. May I address that? Yes. I just wanted to say he's with uh, us now. You see, it's actually been with us about a month. Uh, so lease driver, it's no problems. Uh, he brought his own vehicle there, and uh, we're preparing it now to go on the road. And uh, we, we have any issues with him, and uh, I just wanted to say that. And it was expunged, and it's so confusing to some of the drivers that it says on there it listed, but those expungements are always been for board many times. So I just want to say I don't have a problem with him, and uh, hopefully you'll. Allow him to continue to drive, and uh, and we'll take care of him. Our end of the bargain on it, and his attorney is here if he, if he wants to speak with her. Did you represent him on the criminal case? Our office did, yes. Yeah. Mr. Ballinger is the one who handled his criminal charge. So how are, are these expunged offenses showing up on a standard TBI background check? I do not know. I have a copy of the expungement for the disorderly conduct charge. I'm um, not complaining because we're catching a lot of them this way. but Yes, so. I have noticed that also. We have had quite a few clients who have come through our office with this issue. Um, and we've called the TBI. I think there's a disconnect between the clerk's office and the TBI reporting, and it's, I've spoken to the clerk's office about it as well. And since this was expunged, it was dismissed. I, it doesn't look like he had any prior criminal record of any significance either. No, he did not. Speak English? Yes. How come you failed to list it on your uh, application? Uh, I'm sorry, I apologize the first time, uh, first of all. This first time, time you filled out this application? No, I, I filled it uh, the past yeah. five years, but these things happening uh, last year uh, within uh, five days different when I filled it that one. My understanding already expanded, everything is gone. 
So uh, I fill it that one, uh, I pass it, and then the other one I fill. Finally, <coughs> I forget and then I give them. So they, I didn't mention it. So even if I say it, that one is not going to stop me in my uh, knowledge. So I'm sorry by mistake. It is a minor offense. It was dismissed, and he has no prior criminal record. Kind of like the same the guy before. Make a motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Thank, Thank you. Thanks, Thank sir. you very much. We also have some wrecker and towing services uh, driver applications. The first is William uh, E. Favors. Mr. Fields. Mr. Favors, uh, in making his application, Mr. Favors failed to list a 2003 charge of uh, a drug paraphernalia charge. He listed the other things that need to be listed were listed. In fact, probably a couple of things that we didn't have, but <laughs> he he failed to list the drug paraphernalia which appeared on his record. He was charged 2003. Mr. Fields, do you know what the disposition was on that case? I didn't look yet. 12 hours fine. 12 hours and a fine? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> it was a misdemeanor. Yes. If it had been disclosed, it wouldn't have been an issue. It, you know, when we looked at the record, the last contact he had with the system, as best I can see, is 2004. Right. It's pretty old. And that was a probation violation, so. Been staying law abiding since 2004? Yes, sir. Good. Good. I make a motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank, Thank you. you. Next, we have an application from uh, Kawade Huey Robinson. Mr. Robinson? You really get to learn to pronounce the name. <laughs> Kawade Huey Robinson? Okay, they're not present. He, was, he received a letter. What was the complaint? Or what well, is the problem? We got it here. He uh, had disclosure, but they were, uh, again, if there were charges that I, they were all dismissed. But the most serious ones were dismissed, but I still wanted to share them with you. He's not here, so. Move deferral? Yeah. I mean, technically, he is not disqualified. It's just something you wanted us right. to look at. Right. He would not have been, in other words, I don't, he didn't leave anything out that I'm yeah. aware of. He just uh, failed to, uh, I mean, just. It's just a volume. Yeah, correct. Okay. <clears throat> If he were here, I would say he's in order. Did I hear a motion to defer? Yes, sir. Yeah. I second. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, motion passes. We'll move him to next month. Michael uh, W. Propis. This was also moved from our August agenda. Yes. Mr. Propis, we've not, again, we notified him. We've not had any more contact with him. Moved to dismiss. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Next, uh, we have an application for Rucker and towing service uh, by uh, Antoine Robertson. Um, in, two th in making his application, Mr. Robertson failed to list a, a 2015 driver's license, driver's plate issue again driving a record we look at that seriously since their vehicles are what we're dealing with but he failed to list it he did appear to list everything else and there are several charges there that i think you should have reviewed well i do a compliment you on being thorough and putting down 32 different uh incidences you better be honest but that I agree. Um, how'd you keep track of them all? I had um, went down to the courthouse and um, got my record and 
because I wanted to be precise. I seen in the application that everything needed to be listed, so, so I tried to. So then how did you miss the one that brings you here today? Oh, uh, I had an MVR previously, but it wasn't listed. It wasn't listed in it, so I, I wasn't aware. But then again, I had a courthouse record, and uh, the, the record that they got was TBI, so it, it, mm -hmm. it might be a more extensive background check. I'm not for sure. There are a lot of drug cases on here. Everything from possession with the intent to simple possession. Yeah. I'm <coughs> what was the drug? Uh, weed and uh, cocaine. Mm -hmm. And I noticed on the TBI, one of them, at least the initial charge was possession of drugs within a school zone. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. And if I'm reading your handwriting, correctly, <clears throat> you had at least one possession of casual controlled substance back in 2000, or a couple in 2014. Yes, sir. So are you going to pass a drug screen today? Um, yes, sir. What about 30 days ago? Yes, sir. 30 days <laughs> in the past, would you have passed? Yes, sir. Now, are you saying you've quit? Yes, sir. That's why I'm here today, trying to better myself, like gain employment, where I can better for my career. You know? who, who would you be working with? Toe Pros. Are they here? No, sir. Have, have you already been working in the yard for them, not on the trucks? No, nah, I haven't worked for them at all. It was the job that, that was offered for me is um, on the conditions that, that I get my record license. So <coughs> I'm. Toe Pro and Cotton do regular, they do random drug tests of all their drivers. Uh, in fact, we'll have one next month. They actually found, they fired a driver, a terminated driver yesterday uh, on a random. So they, they already do random drug tests now. Have they asked you to take a drug test yet? No, sir. Okay. And that could I be part of your disposition if you chose to. I think that would absolutely be a condition if we get past the uh, failure to report one of the uh, one of his arrests. If we get past uh, the other number of offenses there sure. and the failure to report something. What was the evading of arrest charge in connection with? Um, to the to the charge he was he had asked about with the schools on. The evading arrest? Yes, ma'am. One of the charges is evading arrest. Ma'am, could you repeat that? One of the charges, charge number 29, mm. was evading arrest in March of 2014. Yes, ma'am. Can you explain that? Um, yes, I was just, um, I was pulled over, and um, I had um, some marijuana on me, and uh, I didn't want to get charged with it, so I ran. I mean, that's, that's basically the truth, you know. And I think what he was referring to is it was part of the uh, arrest for yeah. violation yeah. of drug-free school zone. Well, they looked to be three years apart. Just happened to be on the same day, or? Something happened when we were writing it down between 2011 and 2014, but it was March 20th. Yeah, I think he wrote them. And some things look like they were written twice. Right. <laughs> yeah, I was looking at the TBI uh, oh, report back in the, here yep. on March 20th, 2014. Looks yeah. like it's. Was that a school zone, Pat? <laughs> yes, okay. drug free school so zone. That was yeah. three years ago. Actually, in what he wrote down, 29, 30, 31, and 32 are. Well, at least 29 and 30 are dupes. Are duplicates. And the stuff, the drug-free zone that's listed in 11 was really in 14. Right. Okay. Well, the one you failed to report from January 26, 2015, unlawful removal of a plate decal, what's that about? 
What'd you do? I think I had a, um, my car had an accident and my my back bumper was off to where I couldn't hang the tag on there. So I had my tag with some magnets on it, just on the back part of the trunk, because my back bumper was was off the car because I had had an accident. So I, I think that's what, what that is. What happened to the case? What case? The removal of the plate decal in 2015. Uh, um, I, will, I, I, I got it fixed and um, got everything situated, and I, I think they just gave me a, they dismissed it or something. I can't remember. When's the last time you used drugs? Hmm. Um, I say I've been clean about a year, two years, year and a half. And Topro does a drug test before hiring, and they do a, they and do, they do a random. I believe they do initial drug test and then random drug testing through the year. Okay. And they don't do any non-consent, do they? No, they're an emergency company that right. could do non-consent. If we were to grant you a permit conditioned on monthly drug screens and your company didn't do them monthly, would you be willing to do that at your own expense and submit them to the um, to Mr. Fields, How the results? Something huh? like it be, though. Would that be really expensive? Well, I think they run about $20, $25. I mean, I can do that. I'm good with that. Any other questions? I don't think so. Well, I make a motion to approve conditioned on monthly drug screens, uh, either by the company that he's employed with or on his own, and that they, uh, and I'm going to add that they also provide that information to Mr. Fields' office. For how long? Um, for for the first year. And that, is that restricted to Topro? Because we know that their practice is to do it randomly. I, I'm going to say either uh, what I was meaning to, to with the motion was that either Topro or on his <coughs> own, if because I doubt they're going to require monthly screens. Right. So I want to I want to see clean drug screens every month from you. For one year. For one year, yeah. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Good luck. And next we have uh, a company application under other passenger vehicles for hire. Uh, the first is A to B Music City. Mr. Fields. Uh, A to B Music City as well as the other companies were, uh, uh, all their applications are in order and they're qualified to be a other passenger vehicle for hire. Move to approve. Second. <clears throat> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. We also have a company merger request for Cool Springs Executive Services and Black Diamond Limo. Mr. Fields. Um, This is just where if you have two companies owned by the same person, they're going to merge into a single company. Move to approve. Yeah. And everything, again, everything is in order. And there was a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Uh, we now have uh, some disciplinary hearings before us today. Uh, we have three listed on the agenda. The first is regarding American Melody Carriages. And uh, it's a complaint brought by the Transportation Licensing Commission. Mr. Fields. You'll recall last month we had uh, the issue here present, uh, two charges, two uh, violations. 
one involving insurance, other involved, well, the other involving a horse situation. We determined through their, they told us that their, the issue really was not that. The horse was actually being used at that point for Hat Creek. So we separated the, to, and asked for two different hearings. So the issue before you is, did she have insurance as required in 1254-100 during the month of July of this year? And to be clear, then, are we not worried about the Coggins test issue at this point? No, that, that's actually an issue that Hat Creek has to answer for. Okay. That, the, the horse is not a part of this at all. All right. Um, if I may, I think Sam, Mr. Mr. Tennant, will you just please officially introduce yourself since we're I'm being Richard televised? Tennant. Thank you. Yes. And um, I, I apologize. I just finished a federal jury trial yesterday, so I'm kind of getting up to speed. I learned as I came in here today that Samuel Roberts has sent in a letter asking not to be here. Um, I, I didn't know. I know he's got health issues, and I'm not surprised. But I, I'm not. It may be at the office now. So it's. I, I haven't seen the letter. I'm just yeah. told that he had submitted a letter. I had expected he would be here to answer your questions about the business arrangement between himself and Melody Robinson. Um, what I can say, and I don't want to speak for him, I thought he would be here, um, but is it was her belief, okay, and I'm going to her intent, it was her belief that when she was working in July that she was working under his policy. When there was a concern raised, she promptly got herself again properly insured, and I may have shared this with you last time, but this time around I made sufficient copies for everyone on the commission of, you know, the certificate of insurance that she promptly got. So, oh, sure, sure. Yeah. necessary. There's enough for everybody, and it's double sided. Um, you know, ultimately, she had what I would say, from my world, no, no criminal intent, and very well may not have had any violation at all, um, being she was working under Hat Creek. Um, but beyond that, um, it, it really is a situation where she's done everything she can to get in compliance um, and uh, in, a, in a very timely way at that. I mean, as soon as concerns were raised, she addressed them. And I, again, staff, and I've spoken to Ms. Robinson, right? the staff issue is pretty simple. All companies must have insurance at all times. So from a period of the 1st of July until the 24th of July, there was not insurance present. It does not appear that she was operating, based on what I think we know, is she was not operating her carriages or her horses at, during that time. At least I have no independent verification or no, no one has complained. There was nothing there. However, there was a violation and no insurance that didn't involve specifically that operation because again if she was if she was driving a horse for Hat Creek, Hat Creek has insurance it would have been covered and she is a, the drivers can work for different companies and she certainly that's not an issue with that. I think the only issue before you regarding American Melody is a three week gap of insurance. So what's the history with this company and do you have a recommendation? We've not had issues with, with respect and historically we've not had issues with, with insurance or anything like that. Uh, it's a relatively new company, but again, it's, it's, we, we take insurance pretty seriously or mm -hmm. I wouldn't have it in front of them. And again, once I brought it to her attention, we, we, and we've got a series of email conversations back and forth about it. Uh, and the insurance, there were some issues getting the insurance in with, with, with the, between her and the company, but once they communicated, because we were communicating with the company and with the insurance provider as well as Ms. Robinson. So during the time, the months that she did not have insurance, we don't have, we don't have evidence that she was operating. Correct as American Melody Correct. She Now the company was operating as a company and again right. the ordinance specifically requires insurance. Once you're licensed you have to have insurance all the time. Okay, whether you're but operating But she was or not, so the public safety would not have okay. been, I don't, I can't tell you that there was a violation, that, that public safety was uh, affected because she, if she wasn't operating, mm -hmm. clearly the insurance would have been factored, but the idea that they have to have insurance for all of the companies that we regulate, whether it's in this ordinance or the other ones, insurance is very important. Can I ask why you let it lapse? 
knowing that you needed to have insurance? I wasn't driving downtown and I wasn't aware that I still had to have it if I wasn't operating. It's very expensive and I'm the only company with restrictions so I'm not able to work as much as the others and it's been difficult. <laughs> So if I get the bottom line, Mr. Fields, is that there's a technical violation for not having insurance because she had a company, but it doesn't look like the public was at risk because she wasn't operating a carriage. I can't present evidence that she operated without insurance on the streets. Okay. When did the uh, TLC office first notify um, the company that their insurance had lapsed? Do we know that? I did not, I don't know that I brought all of the, I would say it would have been somewhere in the vicinity of the 17th or 18th of July, although I don't have that in front of me. The email, I'm looking at one email that's dated the 25th. Uh, the 21st is the earliest email uh, where I said we, we, I said we still do not have a current effective insurance report in the office. So I'm assuming the, the fact that I said still means I notified. So I'm guessing the 17th or 18th. Well, maybe even the Monday of that week. This is on Friday the 21st, so it could have been Monday or Tuesday of the same week. Insurance became available. It was filed with us on July the 24th. I believe it was the 19th when I got the initial okay. Yeah, it was in that vicinity. Did you find her response to your inquiries about insurance to be appropriate and responsible? Uh, her response was uh, back to me, and I didn't include it. Was you know, let me get, let me get it straight. In so other words, I got an affirmative action. Yes, I'll yeah, get the okay. insurance. So she did what you needed her to start Correct. doing. Okay. And the 21st was Friday. Saying, yeah. <laughs> the 21st, uh, 21st was, was, a, uh, was a Friday. And so you had coverage on the 24th, which was I a think Monday. On the following Monday or Tuesday, we, we got the notice. Okay. Let me double check it. The policy was issued on the 24th. We either got it on the 24th or the 25th. Okay. Okay. to issue a punishment of any kind. Permitted to discuss this a little yeah, bit? Yeah, I, I think so. I think that. I, I think I assessed it basically of what I think, and that is that there is a violation, uh, but the public was not put at risk. There's been no proof that, you know, we can say there's no proof of it, but on the other hand, there's simply, you know, it doesn't appear the public was put at risk. And that uh, Ms. Robinson and American Melody Carriages responded appropriately once notified that you did have to have it. Um, I have no reason to not believe Ms. Robinson when she says, I didn't think I had to have it. She obviously is aware of it now and she's been up here twice in front of us. Um, that's my, my assessment of, for discussion. I agree with you. What, what, what would our decision here today it, be? Yeah, I think you have, there's three or four things you can do. You can do nothing. Mm -hmm. Just basically dismiss the charge. Uh, you can do nothing, dismiss it. Uh, you could find that, yes, there was a violation, and then your options would be a probation period, it could be a suspension, or it could be a revocation. Or could we make a finding there was a violation and not impose any sanction? Mm -hmm. You you could find a violation mm -hmm. you could, and not impose a, and impose a penalty. You could, you could do very much like they do in some of the courts. You will understand this better than me. You would uh, set it aside, and if anything else happened, you mm. could bring it back. I was thinking that you were going to say community service, but I couldn't <laughs> think of one. I did not go to community Are you, are you willing to give some free birthday uh, rides, you know? Uh, I, I think that, that would be an interesting charge, yeah. an interesting disposition. I mean, I agree that there, there's been a violation. Um, you know, one of the things that um, concerns me a little bit, even though it appears that public safety wasn't really ever at issue is um, it, the, you know, ignorance of the fact that she was required as a company to maintain insurance continuously. Um, and even though she took corrective steps fairly quickly to get her insurance back in order, I mean, that's, 
still a, is still a violation, and um, I think that our, particularly our companies, um, certainly more than our drivers and um, um, conductors. I don't. I, I guess that's what you would call a carriage driver. Um, they need to be aware of the rules and regulations that govern their their uh, their companies. Um, so, I mean, I think a probationary period would be appropriate um, because it is very important that our companies understand what their, what their rules and, and their obligations that they need to follow. During that time, when your insurance lapsed, Hatcrick was using your, your, um, they, you were, your, your horse and, and, and carriage, correct, during that time? <coughs> We have interchanged forces, yes. Right, so they really were insured, they just weren't insured by your insurance company or under your name at that time. Right. But they were insured. Billy has informed us earlier when uh, we first started talking about this that it didn't matter who owns the horse. Yeah. But that's a confusion. We do understand there's a difference between when she's driving a horse, the horse has to be insured. But being she had a license under her own name, that's what this insurance issue is. And, and we now, we understand it, and your point is well taken. And I apologize. Uh, Ms. Steele just went through the file. The, the, the initial conversation we had with her, with her insurance carrier would have been on uh, the, the date at the bottom of this showing that it was printed out on uh, July 11th. So it was a little bit earlier than, than I thought. But we had said uh, we'd sent the notice to her carrier saying it has to be on file. So anyway, again, I, but I don't think it affects what y'all are discussing. I mean, right. if there's a technical violation, there's a technical violation. If I may, you know, one consequence of this whole proceeding is she's had to spend time with me. And, and that's a punishment in its own right, but also, you know, we've spent a lot of time parsing through this. And I think your points about the responsibilities of a carriage owner is something that we've gotten into in great detail. And I think the educational, I, albeit I had to learn it myself, I mean, I didn't know any of this on my own, but I think some of the education has been done, and she's well aware, at some expense to herself, that there are ramifications and responsibilities. For my own edi ed edification, how much is the insurance yearly? Thirteen hundred dollars. Okay. I had to sell a carriage to pay it. Mr. Turner. Well, I think we have to find a violation of twelve fifty four one hundred, um, but I I'm think that that's appropriate. And I think that uh, a period of 90 days probation would be appropriate with no imposition of any penalty beyond that. 90 days operating under American Melody Carriages? As probation period? Or night? While operating. It would be against the company. Against yeah, it would be company. against the company. Yeah, not as a driver. Right. It's a company violation, not a driver violation. Put the words motion in front of them. That was a motion. <laughs> I'll put it right behind it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. And I've not seen a letter from, uh, from Mr. Roberts. Again, Mr. Roberts has uh, had uh, health issues, so it's very possible that something came up. Uh, just so well, since I've got you here, mm -hmm. what it, what, here's what it amounted to, it, at least from my perspective, and stop me at any point because obviously I wasn't present for the entire thing. We had a situation where a horse that was owned by one company operated for another company. So the issue isn't about the, other, the company that actually owns a horse, the issue would be for the company that allowed the horse to operate. Uh, the, 
what's required of the horse for a company to have the horse to operate it has to have all their med the, the veterinary records have to be at the office and there is not a specific permit issue for the horse but it's an issue of uh, we have we need the records to make sure that the horse has had all of its tests and all of all of the things that the pictures and so forth so that's what we would be talking to mr roberts about at the present time if he were here and you know if it is of any assistance to you i'm not his lawyer obviously um, but just to get it to you, because I may not be here the next time, I did make copies of the test that was done in Texas and the test that was then subsequently done in Tennessee. And I mean, obviously it's his issue, but he might in good faith plead that the Texas test looks exactly like the Tennessee test. And I do have copies of that. Fair. And, and, and both tests are all filed with you. So, Mr. Mr. Roberts here, I certainly would recommend we defer, unless, again, if the commission has the authority without somebody present or not to make whatever decision you choose to make. I move we I'll defer to way. the uh, October meeting. A second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Uh, the complaint against Hat Creek will get deferred to next month. We also have a complaint against Carla DePlanis and Timothy Schultz. Uh, the complainant is Michael Winters. How are you? Hello. Um, just to clarify, the complaint I signed, but it's on the behalf of Cruzen, not particularly on me okay. or from me. Um, so to clarify, Michael from Cruzen, um, obviously I've seen you guys a couple times, but. Um, to start, this is something I actually uh, hate to bring in front of you guys, and I uh, kind of wish I didn't. Um, but per the ordinance we operate under, I feel like I have the obligation to inform you guys, and from that standpoint, you can kind of do with it as you see fit. But in a nutshell, what we've got is we had two drivers, uh, Carla and Tim, that worked for us. Um, <clears throat> for a couple weeks, we had some suspicions that we had some customer service and some monetary issues. So we decided to do a little secret shopping. Um, <clears throat> I uh, asked someone to do some secret shopping for me. That person's here. So uh, we did some internal reviews where we would very candidly take some binoculars, take a look at who's on the cart, see what they rang in, verify that against transactions. We use an electronic system to ring in money and, and customer count. So if four of you get on a cart, it should say four. It should say what you paid or tipped or whatever. Uh, we noticed a couple discrepancies in our own internal review. Uh, so we at that point decided to do it a little external so that it was unbiased, uh, not from a company perspective. Um, as you probably read the complaint, we went so far as to document the serial numbers of the dollar bills, uh, video record the opening of, of envelopes, uh, check the electronic registers where stuff is rang in. Uh, the witness who was actually the person getting the tour is here um, to give you the full details, but in a nutshell, um, it, it, the, the way it happened was not the way we expected it to happen. Our target, very candidly, that evening was Carla. Um, she was on a tour. So at a, at a whim, I said, okay, let's skip Carla and let's go ahead and go to Tim. And for clarification, just because you guys may or may not know this, I believe they're married at this point. I believe they were boyfriend and girlfriend at the time. I'm not sure the exact standing, but um, there's relationship there, I guess is my point. Um, <clears throat> so we decided to move on to Tim, seeing how Carla was on a tour. I reached out to the person we had on the streets. He made a phone call. Uh, that phone call was for Carla. Tim answered the phone and said, Carla is busy, but I'm more than glad to give you a tour. Uh, he decided to get a tour of Vanderbilt, uh, just as the, the stadium with a supposable child that was gonna go there. Um, he ended up paying $90 for the tour. Very candidly, I told him to overpay and tip graciously. Um, in this case, I, put, and I have it in front of me, I think Tim rang in $24. Now, what's weird about this same occurrence is on the same day, uh, we had someone get on the cart, which we did not know. And, um, and I can look at the exact comments, but it's on Facebook. They got on the cart and they basically said that uh, Tim was giving them a ride. He said, if you need me, call me. I guess whenever he dropped them off, they tipped him a couple of dollars. He wasn't exactly happy with it. So he told her in the future, don't call me if that's what you pay. She would immediately went on the Facebook, gave us a one star review. We have a walkie-talkie system that records everything that we do. We went onto the walkie-talkie system and said, who did this? We just got a, a one-star review. Tim replied back, it was me. 
I'll head to the bay. Because we basically said if this was you, head to the bay because you don't need to be on the street. So my, my problem today that I complained about is we have someone that very candidly we proved stole money, um, which I think is an issue with some of the things within the ordinance. We have someone uh, which the witness who did the tour will testify uh, running red lights while on the cart. Uh, so I think there's a safety issue with the driver at hand. And just so happens that same day, we have Facebook comments and an admission from Tim that he was basically telling guests you're not paying enough, even though it's a tip-based service. And if that's the way you're going to pay, don't call me. So we probably would have terminated him for any of the above grievances. Just so happened we had multiple in one day. Um, now, we obviously, due to the circumstances of the relationship between the two, kind of only had time to test one person. Uh, we immediately terminated both. Uh, Carla, we had internal investigations on where we saw multiple people on the cart and the dollars were not rang in, but we do not have any outstanding third party witnesses to um, that. It's an internal review. Tim is the only one we actually, for lack of a better word, set up with a tour just to see what would happen. Uh, I have a video recording of the, the envelope being uh, opened, meaning at the end of the day, Tim drops an envelope with his cash in it. We video recorded the opening of that unsealed envelope and verified the funds in the envelope as compared to what the, the fake tour writer gave. That money was not in the envelope. It's not in our recording system. Um, and once again, as a company, it's a little embarrassing to even stand here and tell you all this. But I think due to the ordinance, what happens in the low-speed vehicle world is when somebody doesn't work out at one company, they go to another. And I told Billy I felt an obligation to share our dirt to some extent with you guys because I'm not so sure um, that this individual should very candidly be driving for anyone, much less us. Ultimately, your decision to do whatever you want. I'm more than glad to answer any questions and share with you any data that I have. Some of it I think you may have already seen in the paper. If I can have just a little clarification. You've got theft issues with both of them? <clears throat> I have theft with both. Okay. One is an internal review that I have right. no third party or support on. The right. second one was one we set up with a third party, which is here in the room. And then you have safety issue, public safety issues with both or one driver? On the fake tour that we set up, yeah. uh, not only was there a monetary discrepancy, but the person that gave the, the tour also ran a red light while the person was on the cart. That, um, which one is that? Uh, Tim. Tim, okay. Anything about Carla and safety issues? No. Okay. <clears throat> From a company perspective, because there's a relationship there, uh, we kind of felt that there was a mutual whatever going on there. So um, our internal investigation very candidly showed that both were not exactly doing what they should be doing. Our external AD authority setup proved what we thought was true. And I think in an unarguable way. Mr. Fields, can you remind me why this was on a previous agenda, wasn't it? It was. It would have been on the agenda. Mr. Uh, Winters asked that we uh, move it to uh, this agenda. He had a conflict at the last meeting. And I was unavailable. I guess I also see a third concern, and that is uh, treatment of people who are visiting our city and using this service, um, telling them don't call me if uh, you're not going to pay more. Well, per the ordinance, as you all know, we either have a rate card or we don't. We currently do not have a rate card, so it's tip as you see fit. Now, if that's a penny or that's $20, that's your call. It's like being a server at Applebee's. You get what you get, and you can't exactly throw a fit when you don't get what you want. So we as a company probably would have done something in relation to that. just so happens this rolled into a big ball of mess. What is the videotape you have of? It's us of opening the envelope. I didn't want any disparaging At, at the store, or at the office. At the office when we took it out of the safe and opened it. Which yet. is the envelope that they put the money in and give to you. And they drop in the safe. So we have no access to it until we open the safe, and then the envelope is sealed. All right. Any other questions of Mr. Winters thus far? Normally, you would expect to see all ninety dollars in there. The way our, our our payment system works is every dollar is turned in. That's in their agreement. Uh, at the end of that, every week we split money with them. So if they make a hundred, they get fifty. We get fifty. Uh, so they turn in every dollar, no matter how it's derived, whether that's tours, tips, whatever it may be. Is it a fifty-fifty split? Yes. All right.
right. Um, I think we should hear from um, Ms. Duplantis and Mr. Schultz. And like I said, if you need also the gentleman who was on the tour for the passing of the dollars is here as well. Would you like to have him Not speak less now? Not necessary. Up to you. Where is he? Right here. Let's, let's hear from him first. Yeah, There's another Aren't you the owner of one of the companies? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yes, E. Holland, okay. My name is Terry Evanstein. Uh, he owns the E. Holland Golf Park Company here in town. So, what would y'all like to ask me? You were taking a tour? Yes, sir, I was. And you were the plant? I was the guest. Was it a good tour? Was the tour good? It, it was okay. I recorded a lot of it to kind of back up anything, discrepancies that somebody may have. So, just kind of protect myself and Mr. Winters with prison. And are you the person who reported the uh, that the driver was going through red lights? Uh, yes, sir. I actually have that on video as well. One red light or multiple red lights? Uh, the one that I caught that I could say that I can prove would be one red light. Um, I could say there's two, but the proof that I have is on video. Well, did you see two or not? Yes. Okay. So. I just want to make sure I cover all my bases. That way, nobody can say that I didn't do something. And you had the marked mo or the money that they had read the serial numbers off and everything. Yes, yeah, sir. Mr. Winters called me, and like he described to you, that he believed that he had some employees that may be possibly stealing, and I asked if I could help. Um, I pretty much get along with a lot of these companies, regardless if they have the same business as I do or not. It doesn't really bother me. I, I don't mind helping anybody out. Um, so, Mr. Winters asked me to tip him very nicely. Um, so for cruising golf carts, they can do a $15 tour 30 minutes. Um, I'm a retired police officer, police officer after 16 years, and we've kind of been down this road before doing these type of little stings for silly stuff. Uh, so uh, I tipped him $90, and it was a uh, $150 bill and two twenties, and I took pictures of both of the uh, serial numbers, or all three of the serial numbers on all three of the bills. Uh, immediately texted him to Mr. Winters, that way he had proof of these were the bills that I was giving him, uh, that way he would know if they showed up in his system. Um, after the tour was done, uh, I was dropped off and, and he went on his, his way, his business. So. I kind of feel like if somebody was taken from me, I would want some help if I could get it, you know, so. Well, thank you. Yes, sir. Hello. Hello. Hi. You, please I'm, introduce yourself. I'm Carla Duplantis. And I'm Tim Schultz. And just to clarify, we're engaged now, so. <laughs> that was an issue earlier but now i would like to point out um tim did have a rough afternoon and he had an unpleasant guest experience um and all that was really said he dropped some people off at the uh hall of fame and uh, they tipped him like three dollars or something after like 30 minutes of his time and he politely said please don't call me back pulled up picked up two guests and immediately went on a tour there was not this big screaming yelling match that uh was alleged um, he was not belligerent he was not ugly he just said please don't call me and uh, picked up a tour and I think if there was any kind of hostility in that engagement two more guests wouldn't have readily gotten on his cart right there at the same location if, had there been an unpleasant altercation were you present at the time no ma'am I wasn't oh, then why are you not telling okay. the story so I uh, anyway I picked him up first it was a call that came in on ring central that another driver had committed to take it and then they handed it off to me lately now it was at Jack's barbecue on Charlotte and so which you can't get to very legally you have to go in from the side and then I had taken them all the way down to the Hall of Fame giving them a tour on the way telling them everything that was at the end of the tour I pulled them on the side of the the Hall of Fame where the side entrance is because we really shouldn't be unloading up front where the buses are. And they gave me three dollar bills wadded up in a ball while I was straightening them out to put in the drop box when I noticed it was three. And all I said was, you know, if this would you think that ride and my time was worth, 
please don't call me, call Uber or someone, someone else if you're looking for the cheapest ride in town because that's not what we do. Calmly drove off. I wasn't, I tried to be as polite as I could, but this is how I make my living, you know, and I was having a bad day. I was dehydrated. Uh, you know, he's talking about we stole waters, never stole waters, but you know, it's, it's against the law for an employer not to give drinkable water for their employees. Not only did he not supply us water, he insisted we carry a cooler of water. This is what he said, I stole it, what I didn't. He ain't got no video of me stealing uh, uh, a cooler of water because it didn't happen. But he's pressed, you know, he's put that in there. I didn't steal nothing. But the whole thing was about that we, he didn't, we didn't want to sell his water or sell his Red Bull. Well, the cooler, I wouldn't steal it anyway, because it was cheap cooler. The, the ice would melt within an hour, and then there was nothing. You were hauling around a, a cooler of water and Red Bull all day long. The other thing is, is on tip by law of the state of Tennessee, when you give a service for a tour, $15 for a half hour, $30 for an hour, $45 per person, and they tip over that amount, I didn't steal that. That's the employee, employer is not allowed to get any part of the tip according to state law. And we've turned all that in. I've turned in $100 tips that I shouldn't have turned in because they had no rights to those over the service. When I do a great tour and I give it up and I sing to people and do the things that I do, that tip money is my money on top of the tour. And now, just, just to note, that is, clar that is clarified in uh, Title 50, uh, Chapter 2 of Wage Regulations of the ten uh, 2010 Tennessee Labor Code. That instance says that so any, you, any, any monies paid over the price of an established <laughs> service is for the employee and not the employer. And as far as the water statute, that's the 1990 to employees to provide drinking water that that's uh can you read that for me the health and safety and welfare yeah. regulations of 1992. but and, and as far as under under ringing tours i'm not i mean there may have been an instance that i didn't charge for a child or something but we were expected to uh use their mobile point of sale system and those numbers never matched at the end of the night because we're trying to ring stuff up um while we're fighting with traffic and entertaining guests and it's impossible to, impossible to be a thousand percent accurate with the point of sale system when you have when you're dealing with everything and as far as um you know, any traffic violations uh, me nor my husband or soon to be husband either one have any traffic violations i've only even had one incident with the metro pd and that was over my guests not wearing a, a, a seat belt they asked them to put them on and that was the end of it. We have no moving violations, whether uh, low speed or in our vehicles. I got pulled over once because someone has still the, the month sticker off the license plate on the golf cart. But. You know, and as far as our, you know, our current situation, um, I returned to my previous affiliation with Music City Golf Carts. We continue to recommend cruising drivers to guests and speak highly of them to tourists. And- Because uh, they're I, all I, in our boat. Um, I, I really wish, uh, you know, unfortunately a lot of times employers and employees, the relationship doesn't work out and that's what happened here. And I really wish he would just do his thing and let us do ours and we don't bash each other. So you no longer work for Cruisin, you now work for? Music City Golf Carts and Ken Ross is here. Both of you? Yes, mm -hmm. sir. So you, you don't dispute that uh, you only turned in $24 when you received $90? No, That's I don't, I don't, I don't know like that. And you didn't turn it in because you felt that it was earned by you and it, it should It was be. earned by me for a good by, by By law, that's his. What was, I don't understand what the, arrangement is between you and the owner of Cruzen. Did you not have an arrangement before when you took oh, the job yeah. 
What? That said that you would submit everything. I'm just asking. Oh yeah, and, and it was supposed to. He said it got up here and said it was a 50/50 <laughs> split. It was never a 50/50 split because he had a $20 cart fee, which that's fine if that's what it is. But he split the money in half, then take the cart fee. So he took $40 off the top every day, 80 between us every day. Uh, I'm, I'm just trying to understand this. When you took the job, when yeah. when you yes. came in and took the job, did he tell you that this was how it was going to be? Well, yeah, but he also said that it was a $20 uh, uh, cart fee and it was just $20 a day when it ended up being $40 a day. So yeah, the, he said a lot of things. Well, and there are uh, some other discrepancies with his contracts. Like, uh, for instance, we were expected to uh, turn in uh, deja vu bounties where deja vu would pay the driver $12 <coughs> a head. We had to fill out W-9s for deja vu and we were 1099 at the end of the year based on those earnings from deja vu. But with cruising, we were expected to turn that in. They kept half. The other half was uh, uh, paid to us on a paycheck. But at the end of the year, uh, this calculate <coughs> the half is calculated into our earnings again. Uh, whereas we're taxed one and a half times when we're only when we were only receiving fifty percent. So there, there are some contract issues that our attorney is going to handle in, in civil litigation. But as far as that, that has nothing to do with you. It, you don't get paid an hourly wage. No. That's correct. So you're not technically an employee? Well, no, the uh, attorney that we have is, uh, uh, he's been in contact with the uh, Labor Board as well as the IRS, and apparently Mr. Winters does not quite pass the litmus test, and uh, it's their, uh, their uh, viewpoint that he went from a contract or from employee to contractor status for tax purposes. And then and, uh, we, were, they, they we were never they were allowed, if the weather was bad, we weren't allowed to just come in or whatever because he was getting paid for the advertisers that are on the cart that we weren't getting compensated any, but we were not allowed to come in on, on bad weather days and things like that. I'm just trying to understand something. The agreement that you had with the company was that you would submit all the money that you received and yeah. then they would take their cut 50, 60, whatever percent it yes. was, or 50% before, that you would do that, and then they would give you what's left, but yeah. you felt that they didn't deserve that, so you didn't submit the money. You didn't well, live up to your- Well, at that point, I knew from the, the Facebook review, I'm sorry to talk over you, but I knew that, that they were firing me anyway. Oh, uh, so- All of this was yeah. orchestrated yeah, after already, the Facebook I, review. After the face review, I'd already agreed to, the, the, to do the tour, so I was gonna go finish it also finished two rides that I had people stranded out and no one else would answer and go pick them up. So I finished those after the tour before I turned my car down. I, I would just say that this is an, a, a matter for civil court and certainly does not uh, justify the, the commission's time because we do not generate, we, we're not a public safety issue. <coughs> we give great tours, our guests are very happy and uh, sometimes somebody has a bad day. <coughs> Are there other instances in which you withheld funds and didn't turn them in to cruising? Uh, no. No. This was the only time? This was the only time. But like I said, I knew that I was done for. I even <coughs> told him on the tour that I knew that I was fired when he picked me up. I said, but I already told you that I would do the tour, so I'm going to go uh, and keep my word to you because you've been hanging out. Because he was waiting for her and she couldn't get off to her. And, and Which tour was that? The, doing the tour of Vanderbilt campus. With Terry from Hee Holland. With Terry from Hee Holland. Did you know that you were fired when you did the tour with before the three? I did the, before with I the, even started the tour. Did you know that you were fired when you did the tour with the three women who gave you the $3 bills? Oh, no, no. That's what I'm saying. All that's what this. started my bad day of firing. Of, you know, I knew I was fired at that point. Because anyone can go online. Now, we were in court. He can't present them, and I was never given the opportunity to even tell my side of the story. I was just told to take my golf cart and go back to the office. I was done. No one ever spoke to me in person. It was all done by email and text message. Is there anything else you'd like for us no, to consider? No, I just, I, I really enjoy showing people around Nashville and would love to continue to do it. Semi, did you just say you were in court? No. Okay. Hmm. No, he said like in court. Like in court, okay. Well, thank you. Mr. Fields, um, uh, we are not, 
we are not a civil court, we're not right. a criminal court, so we're we're here just to determine if they have violated any of our rules or the ordinances regarding uh, drivers of low-speed vehicles. And I wanted to inquire if you could um, point to us the uh, the I rule that we're attempting to interpret and uphold here. The the issue of theft and withholding and that sort of thing, I think, is a civil issue. I think it's possible that under 6.73200 6 conduct of drivers, it says, the very first one says, a driver shall in all times act in a reasonable, prudent, safe, and courteous manner. Uh, the question would be, were any of the actions that Mr. Winters is alleging unreasonable, imprudent, unsafe, or discourteous, I think is, is the issue. Again, uh, the issues of theft and that sort of thing is, is clearly a civil issue. Uh, he could speak more to where the issues he raised to me were, you know, just the, the making sure that the people who are, who are permitted by this commission uh, be positive reflections and, act, and acting in accordance with the ordinance. Is that the only uh, ordinance? I believe so. Mr. Winters may have other sections that he would want to quote specifically, but, but in my review, that's what I generally would have, that's what I would have gone to. Well, the ones I highlighted were a rate card issue. We don't have rates. We can't charge rates. We can't say a dollar is too much or, or not enough. Uh, section 6.73.330 is if we're going to have rates, we have to have a rate card. We don't have one, and we've worked very hard to make sure the drivers know we have set prices on tours and those kind of things, and tips means tips, whether good or bad. Where Where is your... What facts are you relying upon for the violation of a rate card? Is that because he didn't, wouldn't, no, hold on. Sorry. Is that because he wasn't satisfied with a $3 tip or what? Yes, we can't tell okay. someone what they have to pay. Right, okay. So that, that's, that's the factual basis for the allegation right. of this particular section. Okay. And that's all I need. You know, and I'm not here for hearsay. I understand the person, in this case, Nikki, which is the one that made the comments, not here to speak for herself. I don't know if I gave you a copy of the Facebook review. I've got I'm it. simply repeating what she said. I wasn't there. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the yelling comment, not from me. It's just her review. Um, we have a boxer system, which I think I also copied you guys on, maybe. This is a transcript of him basically saying, yeah, that was me, and it's against policy, and I'll head back to the shop. So this was his acknowledgment of, yes, this was me, and I'll head to the shop. Our comment we put on Voxer was, whoever did that, um, you need to pack up and edit the shop. He acknowledged that after he'd finished the tour with Terry because he hadn't heard the Voxer message and tour the tour where Terry was done. Um, <clears throat> our concern is that, and then just from a social media standpoint, these are some of the other comments that are on social media that make us concerned about what they're saying <coughs> to guests. Uh, we found that one as we were doing some searches on our concern of how they're treating guests. This one obviously was on Facebook. That one's a different one. Um, kind of the driver is something we take very important. We want to represent Nashville well. Um, and every now and then you get a guest that very candidly, yeah, I just don't like. They just don't go well. I get that. But you, like in a restaurant, you can't always express your true feelings sometimes. You just got to bite, bite the bullet and keep moving. I understand the, uh, the money issue is a money issue. Um, but just to clarify, just so we're all on the same page, there's the exact the contract they signed stating exactly how much they get paid. I know that's not your decision, but there's no question mark on how do I get paid, when do I get paid, everything is in writing. So once again, I leave it to the commission to do whatever you think is best, and I just thought we had the obligation to inform the commission based on the ordinance. I was learning something today. Is it true that on the golf carts, um, the drivers can sell water and Red Bull to passengers? Correct. We have a little cooler tray above the street. That's all right. I don't need a lot. Of, I just want to know. Yes. Okay. They have the ability to do so, yeah. All right. And then I saw something about failure to promote T-shirts. Are they selling T-shirts on the golf cart? No. What happens occasionally is, is one of our advertisers, um, 
they run activations on whatever products or services they have, and occasionally they have shirts or whatever that they're giving away, yeah. selling or whatever. So the answer is yes. Sometimes there's T-shirts for the driver to sell to Correct. passengers, and they, they make a monetary they, piece of that on the uh, from the sponsors that have billboards, or whatever on potentially the potentially yes. Okay. Anything else being sold on the carts? No. Okay. <laughs> Do you get a cut of that? If it's something that we're promoting, absolutely, and we ask the drivers not to sell anything. And I'm not judging. I just yeah. really want to know. Well, there's trying to make revenue on these things any way we can. Yes, I know. Sometimes our advertisers are activating something and want to promote their product. I think the members service. of this commission have wondered how people are making money on these mm -hmm. uh, tip-only golf carts. Tours is the number one way. Mm -hmm. okay. Tips is not where the money is. So tours is really the bread absolutely. and butter. If I could do <coughs> away with point-to-point, -point, just do tours, I would do it today. Okay. It's a, it's a new... You know, as you know, it's it's a new mode of transportation in Nashville, and we're I think everybody's still learning as to how folks are making money and what they're doing and why they're doing it. Even it varies. We have some drivers that make very good money on point to point, mm -hmm. but as a whole, tours is definitely uh, much more advantageous. But relevant to today, it looks like the facts that we're looking at are running two red lights, discourt potentially discourteous to passengers and what oh, oh and, and the, the rate cart and the, the, right? the well, theft issue whether that violates 6.73200 whether well, theft does yeah <laughs> I believe that theft is a civil matter I totally yeah. agree but I think the facts are undisputable how would, on that it happened so we're open for discussion how would you see it uh, pertaining to 63200 673200 um, the theft issue. Well, Mr. Fields, can you read the full rule out for us? 6.73200, conduct of drivers. A driver shall at all times, one, act in a reasonable, prudent, safe, and courteous manner. Two, permit a person, not permit a person, not permit a person not possessing a LSV driver's permit to operate the LSV or exercise control over the operations of an LSV. Not permit more passengers to be carried in an LSV than the number of approved seat belts installed in the LSV, and at no time shall the driver allow any passenger to ride in any area of the LSV not specifically designed or designated as a seat. Four, not permit any passenger 12 years or of age or younger to ride in LSV unaccompanied by an adult. Um, Number five, travel only roads with speed limits that do not exceed 35 miles an hour. This subsection 6.73.205 to 10.5 does not prohibit a low speed vehicle from crossing a road or a street at an intersection where the road or street has a posted speed limit of more than 35 miles per hour. Not op operate LSV in excess of 25 miles an hour. Not operate LSV under the while under the influence of intoxicating beverages or drugs, obey, observe and obey all state and local traffic laws and regulations, not permit a driver or passenger to stand or ride on any part of the LSV other than the designated seating area while the LSV is in motion and to advise the passengers that they must be seated except when loading or unloading. Number 10, riding a, wearing a seat belt at all times the LSV is in operation and then Number 11 is comply with any other requirements adopted by the MTLC by rule and refrain from any other conduct prohibited by the MLT, MTLC by rule. Uh, there's also a section in the ordinance, and I can go back to it, that says you must obey all federal, state, and local laws. Traffic laws. Laws in general. All laws in general. In other words, that, that would be the point if they were, let's say this were a criminal situation, there were charges being filed. If there was a violation, then you could take that in consideration of whether a driver should be a driver. May I ask the owner of Music City a couple of questions? Yes. Come on. Oh. And move your hat, please. I just want to ask you, do you have the same type of a, a do you um, share in tips that your drivers make? Yeah, we operate basically the same as Mr. Winters. The same thing? Yeah. So by going to your company, they agreed to do the same thing, which is to submit yeah. all of the money that they make and that you would share yeah. in the tips. So you basically all yeah. work the same. Yes. Yeah, I don't understand why they would, okay. I just wanted to know okay. if it was different. Do you? Yeah. yeah, I have a question. Yeah. Did they address with you this statue that they 
reference to us today that they're entitled to keep their tips above the tour? No, uh, no. Did they bring any issue to you about you having to provide water to them? No. Thank you. Okay. Uh, what about also, I think the 1099 was an issue also that they had their attorney. Did they talk to you about that as well? Not in general terms, not in specific terms. Okay. okay. All right. Thank but you. I would just say if there is any suspension of them, that maybe it not be applied right away. I'm sorry? That if there's any suspension, that they would not be applied right away to them. Why? Why? Well, it, there's a short-term economic loss to us to not have the drivers to rehire drivers that time. So there's a financial impact if they're suspended today. If they're suspended to your right company. now, yeah. And I've had no incident of theft or any kind of problem with them. And do you have the same kind of system in place where you, where you? We're track probably a little bit more relaxed about it. A little more relaxed. Relaxed, yeah. But I've had no issue with them and no complaints. How long they've been with you? Uh, about two months. How long? Two months. Two months. Yeah. Right. Okay. Could you just officially tell us your name? I'm Kenneth Ross. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Would make me yeah. Well, sure. uh, getting back to your question uh, of, of to me, I mean, we, I think we just need to decide if um, the theft uh, issue is. Could be covered by a, a could be a violation of 6.73200, and I mean I think it's debatable. I mean it's you know based on a strict reading of the of the uh, rule, it probably isn't. Well, it, it would only be number one where courteous and um, and also following traffic laws. And safety, rule. yeah. Safety. Reasonably safe, prudent, and courteous. Correct. Yeah. That's a safety and customer service issue violation. Yeah. Right. Six seventy three two hundred. And I have a really hard time finding sufficient evidence based on Facebook and social media sites. But, but he admitted it. Well, I, I agree. He, he said he said his, it. <laughs> Mr. Yeah. Schultz's post or his the the uh, log or what is the, yeah yeah the log of his voicemail said it was me or the post right. or whatever mm -hmm. it was. Said, yep, it. that's me. And we have the first hand evidence of the running of the red light. So. So we have uh, an eyewitness on the running of the red lights, and we have an admission on the encounter with the passengers. All right. I yeah. think that's the only thing that we okay. can really. Yeah. All right. You can do your 90 day suspension again. <laughs> <laughs> I did, I did probation last time, <laughs> or was yeah. it suspension? Yeah. Was it really? For her? No, yeah. it was Melody. I thought it was probation. No, you did suspension. Holy shnikes. Yes. <laughs> no, I thought you did probation. No, it's no, probation. It's just probation? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Well, Make sure the minutes did. reflect it. Yeah. yeah. I thought it was probation. I'm thinking, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm going to first uh, thank Mr. Winters for bringing this up. I know you're wrestling a little bit about bringing your company. It's a little embarrassing. A little bit of dirt. Didn't well, want to do it. <laughs> well, I understand, and I appreciate you bringing it to our attention because it goes beyond just the theft issue. It goes to drivers being reasonably safe, prudent, and courtesy, or courtesy to the uh, passengers. I don't know if that helps to start discussion on this, but what are your all thoughts? Well, that's big for me, is being courteous to everyone. Not every visitor here in Nashville is, is pleasant, but I think it's our responsibility to respond in a pleasant manner. And being, as my company is part of tourism, I know that I have a lot of people out there, including myself, who deal with our tourism every day. And we, we uh, commit to that. If you want to be in this industry, you have to commit to that. Bad day is bad day, but you can't take it out on a customer. And hey, if you would just average the $90 and the $3, or the $76 tip and the $3 tip, it would have been a good day. <laughs> Two good customers. 
Um, I move we find a violation of 673-200 um, uh, in the area of uh, safety and uh, customer service and uh, does that need to be a two-part? I move that we find a violation. I can keep going, right? Yeah, you're good. And, uh, and um, with a uh, penalty of <clears throat> A 90-day suspension for uh, Mr. Schultz. Effective when? Immediately. A second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any nays? Motion passes. Do we need a motion on the record regarding Ms. Uh, Duplant? Finding that it was not a violation? I mean, if you take no action, there's no action. Yeah. Okay. You, you certainly can take an affirmative action to dismiss it um, or take no action and it basically unless the legal tells me it doesn't it would end with this commission meeting i would prefer to take no action that's fine i second your no action all those in favor aye, aye. aye. motion passes all right that concludes the complaint thank you mr winters for bringing that to our attention uh, under other business, we have a United Cab certificate status um, and a Taxi Cab permit report. Ms. Fields? I just have a report I need to make with you. The, the Metropolitan, uh, six, uh, Metropolitan Code of Law 6.72 requires each uh, holder of a, uh, of a certificate of public convenience and necessity to renew that permit each year of, for tax cabs renew it by August 31st of each year. The fees have to be paid, reports have to be made. Uh, United failed to do that on September the 1st uh, because the ordinance specifically says failure to renew, and I'll be happy to read that. It says uh, failure to renew a certificate by August 31st shall result in forfeiture of the certificate. So since it was not a debatable question or an issue the commission could or could not take action on his failure to uh, renew on uh, August 31st resulted in my sending a letter that's that said in part you failed despite multiple reminders and warnings both in writing and verbally to complete the re renewal process with which resulted in the forfeiture of the certificate of public convenience uh, further it says you're ordered by this office to cease all operations of United Cab within the area of the Metropolitan Government immediately. This includes any operation at the airport. This was sent to uh, the uh, certificate holder by certified mail. We haven't gotten it back. No action is required by the commission since the ordinance specifically says if they fail, then they're it's forfeit. We have no evidence that they're operating. I think I think there probably have been a couple of the United Cabs. Uh, on the streets, we certainly uh, are working to make sure they understand they're going to have to switch companies, and they may, okay. I'm, I'm assuming they're in the process of switching companies. And you've heard nothing from Mr. Mann regarding it. Only the, that, his only that day, and the, the next morning, that it, uh, it was, it was certainly no. We've not heard any more legal action. I basically advised him that he needed to seek legal advice and then discuss it with Metro. Mm. And no action required by the commission. And they have 105 permits? Yeah. Yes. Are they just going out of business? They're, they no longer have a certificate. In order to come back to cooperate, they'll have to appear in front of the commission at your annual meeting uh, or a special meeting to request that certificate. But remember how short of drivers we were already before. Well, we, I mean, I mean the, that we had more permits right. than we had drivers well, or cabs. The, the next part of the, the next report I'll make will help explain that a little bit. Now. Yeah. So that that's a, in, uh, it doesn't take us below a, a level that we need. Correct. If I may move on to the taxi permit report. Uh, during the renewal period, the total number of certificates requested or permits requested went from 1324 to 1144. That includes United. It also includes uh, green cab surrendering 20 permits. It includes quick cabs surrendering 20 permits, and it includes yellow cabs surrendering 20, 35 permits. Uh, the ordinance is, is relatively vague with respect to uh, the surrender. However, uh, we believe that they had, if they chose that they did not want to operate them just as you gave them, they could surrender them on their own. 
and which they did without any coercion or encouragement from the office. They basically chose not to renew those certificates, uh, those permits. So we who's have a the, total. Who's the third company? Uh, Yellow. They, they had been, they had, uh, Yellow had oh, 165 had approved and went to 130. Uh, Green had 55 and went to 35 and uh, Quick went from 50 to 30. This is because they didn't have cabs and drivers, right? right? Yeah. They had a, it's, it, it, it is a challenge. We'll be able to report to you in October how many drivers have renewed. As of this morning, I'd love to put her on the spot. Ms. Stillman, approximately this morning, <laughs> 500, yeah. nearly 600 had renewed uh, so far. Uh, we'll, the deadline for renewal is tomorrow afternoon. <coughs> I do not anticipate 500 drivers appearing in the next day. <laughs> you would be busy, Lisa. And that's the report. No actions required. Great. Thank you. Any other business, Mr. Fields? I do not have any. Well, I, I've got something I'd like to bring up very quickly. Uh, last Thursday afternoon, Mr. Turner, Mr. Fields, and I attended the uh, transit campaign announcement. I guess is what it was a meeting, and it, it was a little bit enlightening uh, because the report that we've all been waiting on. What, Mr. Fields, the name of that report again? We've asked for a study of the slow-moving vehicles yeah. to be made. Um, part of it was to gather some. Part of the process is to get to gather public input and a comment and so a preliminary report was given to the downtown stakeholders group uh, convened I think by the mayor's office at, mm -hmm. the, uh, at the Music City Center. And the report was uh, enlightening um, and, and, and it's going to address the slow speed and pedal taverns, pedal vehicles as well. So when are they expecting that? I'm hoping we're going to be able to report it to you in October. My guess at the latest would be November. It depends. I, I think a lot of it, uh, they, they did not have the public ga information gathering process the last time. Um, I, so now I suspect they're getting feedback and they'll factor that in and may even need to go back out and do some additional uh, observations and data gathering. But, I, I think they, they, during that meeting, they discovered that they are going to have to go back out and to look at a few more things. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I just bring that to everybody's yeah, attention that there's progress being made on uh, reviewing the slow speed and pedal vehicles. I'm uh, glad that some of us were able to attend. I was not able to get to that meeting. So. Well, it's Mr. easier when you just have to yeah. walk down there. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Fields promised both Pat and I there would be cookies. <laughs> <laughs> and cookies were delivered. And cookies were delivered. <laughs> One last thing. I'm sorry, guys. The documents I gave you were out of the personal file. Oh, you may have them. Oh, yours. Good out. Thank you. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passed. Aye, aye. Thank you. Good to me, man. Yeah. Work through things good. They're going to feel the 90 days. <laughs> you know. It's yeah. always hard to appeal drawing things. Yeah. It's it's not they, it's only he, yeah. right? Yeah. We're right. Well, well a split debate. I'm not sure if he's driving the bus. Yeah, somebody's still earning money and, and uh right. and mm -hmm. the I'm company sure only has driving the bus. Yeah. Didn't look like it. No, I don't think he would have said anything or she unintentionally, I really think. Somebody hadn't split. said yeah. hey, what, what is she having to do with this? Split debate. Solomon's we didn't split debate.